Hello, I would like to talk today about one very basic and self-evident thing about the uh, railway axle bearing load. But let's start like this. The main parameter that expresses the ability of any bearing to withstand a load is the parameter called basic dynamic load rating C. It has an abbreviation C. The definition of this parameter can be found in any bearing catalog. It is the load that the bearing can theoretically endure for 1 million revolutions without starting to develop, develop on its raceways the damage which is called spalling. Uh, in the case of uh, an axle bearing, railway axle bearing, this parameter C can be always found on the drawing. Usually it is in the upper right, uh, right corner of the drawing. Uh, typically, its value is around 1000 kN, which corresponds to about uh, 100 metric tons approximately. If we want to compare this load to something, we can say that it is approximately the weight of three fully loaded trucks, or if we stay uh, in the railway area, uh, 100 uh, metric tons is approximately the weight of uh, one fully loaded uh, typical uh, American railway freight wagon, the big freight wagon. So, if we hypothetically put one such fully loaded uh, freight wagon on one wheel set bearing with a C value of 1000 kN, this bearing uh, would be able to rotate for 1 million revolutions without getting spalling. Uh, fortunately, such a wagon has eight bearings, not only one. Uh, an axle bearing has a certain advantage over bearings in other non-railway applications. Because, because the bearing size is given by the fact that uh, the bearing is mounted on the relatively large uh, railway axle, large in the diameter. Uh, and the relatively big bearing has correspondingly also relatively uh, big basic uh, dynamic load rating C. We have mentioned that it's about 1000 kN. Now, also visually, it does not maybe look like that. If we look at a heavy freight wagon, for example, the thick railway axle ensures that the railway axle bearing is usually relatively lightly loaded. And this is uh, specifically manifested by the relatively low values of the contact pressures between the rollers and the, and the raceways. Uh, in comparison to uh, other uh, bearings uh, in, in other uh, machines, uh, the most heavily loaded railway uh, bearings uh, uh, have a contact pressure of about uh, 1,400 megapascals. While, for example, in uh, in uh, other applications like Formula One, for example, uh, the the contact pressures are much much higher. Uh, up to 5 gigapascal, for example. So, very, very big a difference. Our railway bearing is lightly loaded. Now, I will ask you a provocative question. If we say that the railway axle bearings are lightly loaded, actually underloaded, does that mean that we can increase uh, their, uh, uh, their load without any problems? The answer is yes, but only under certain conditions. And we could simply express this condition by saying that we have to ensure that the rolling uh, process inside the bearing uh, take place as a close as possible to laboratory conditions. What I mean by this, by laboratory conditions? Uh, it means that we should uh, avoid to get uh, any dirt into the grease, any contamination. Uh, we have to use the right type of a grease. Uh, also the uh, right quantity, the, the grease uh, uh, must be kept uh, in, in the good conditions over the complete uh, operation of the bearing. Uh, also, uh, we uh, should take care that, uh, that the Excel journal and the Excel box housing do not deform the bearing rings in the unacceptable way. because. Only under all these conditions, 
only then we will be able to rely on the relatively high basic dynamic load rating C, which expresses the ability to withstand uh, high loads. Only then we can think about increasing of the axle load. So now I'm coming to the conclusion, uh, an absolutely necessary condition for increasing the axle load of a railway uh, wheel set bearing above uh, originally specified values is a consultation, consultation with a bearing expert. Thank you very much for your attention.